Good morning, everybody. This is Jeff J. Brown, China Rising Radio Sign of Land, just south of the Tropic of Cancer. And um, yeah, I'm still doing my podcast in our old apartment. We've actually moved. My wife and I have slept in, in our new apartment for about the last four or five nights. And um, so we're slowly making the transition over, but uh, it's going to probably be this coming weekend. Today's July 10th, and so um, uh, I'm still doing my uh, podcasting here because my PC's here, and and um, haven't made ha- haven't made the big move to move the uh, PC uh, uh, to uh, the new place. So, um, all right, short, fun, thought-provoking. Uh, article podcast again there's a photograph uh, some links uh, go to SoundCloud uh, the original SoundCloud or YouTube podcast to get the link or go to China rising dot punto press p u n t o p r e s s dot com click on the blog tab and go down and you'll see this article here which is entitled our neighbors roared when Ch- when Russia scored Dead silence when Croatia hit the net. <laughs> and there's a photograph of, um, of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a statue of Charles de Gaulle. And the caption reads, I know you're asking, what does a statue of Charles de Gaulle have to do with Russia, Croatia, and the World Cup? There is a connection. Read on, or in your case, uh, listen on, or watch on. With the time zone difference, the World Cup matches in China have been starting at 1800, 2200, and then 2 o'clock in the, the following morning. Three nights ago, it was Russia and Croatia in their quarterfinal match, which kicked off at 2 a.m. At 0230, I was suddenly awakened by a deafening, raucous cheer. Russia had just drawn first blood against Croatia. Mind you, our double-pane windows were closed. We had on an air conditioner, and the bar restaurant where the eruption took place is 12 floors below us. It was easy to realize that my middle and working-class neighbors were supporting Russia because when Croatia scored nine minutes later, there was total silence below. By then, I couldn't go back to sleep, and when Croatia went went ahead 2-1, to one, Again, dead silence from the Chinese football fans far below. Extra time, and it was 04.30, 4.30 in the morning, when Russia made it 2-2 two to two in the last minute of overtime. This time, it was silent. I guess the fans were too worn out, too drunk, or could sense that while Russia gave it hell, by all reports, Croatia was clearly the stronger side. When it went to penalty kicks and Russia missed the first salvo, again, total silence. Like the bad omen of a devastating flood or earthquake that for thousands of years could spell the loss of a Chinese emperor's heavenly mandate, that blown first kick portended the obvious. Russia's unimaginable World Cup run to the quarterfinals was coming to a proud but defeated end. This was all a great anecdotal experience about life on the streets of China and geopolitical preferences of the average citizen. Not to mention local football fans who are willing to go out at 2 o'clock in the morning to root for Russia when China never even qualified for the World Cup. My wife and I will be joining them tonight at 0200 to see France go against Belgium. It should be a great match. When we went to watch France dispatch Argentina in the first round of the knockout phase, 4-3, to three, we were the only non-Chinese at our neighborhood restaurant bar. The crowd was decidedly in favor of France. I'm not sure why, given its cru- crucial colonial role in profiting from China's opium enslavement during the West's imperial century of humiliation, 1839-1949. However, that sordid fact is forgotten in the minds of most Chinese 
although they will tell you right away about Great Britain's and the United States' dastardly role in China before 1949's communist liberation. Instead, they fondly recall President Charles de Gaulle, who was the first Western leader to recognize Red China way back in 1964, in spite of intense imperial pressure from Uncle Sam not to do so. De Gaulle was staunchly anti-American, which Baba Beijing really appreciated. The Chinese also admired de Gaulle since he saw the writing on the wall and willingly pulled out of Southeast Asia as a colonial ruler in what the French called Indochina back in 1954. This after the U.S. extorted him to militarily occupy Dien Bien Phu using all American materiel or else be deprived of post-war Marshall Plan funding to help rebuild France. Your typical American ally relationship. Nothing but a poodle to be kicked around. Trapped in a bowl surrounded by mountains, Dien Bien Phu led to the inevitable and humiliating loss of thousands of French soldiers at the hands of Ho Chi Minh's communist forces. It was time to leave. All of this fascinating and largely unknown background is richly detailed in books number two and three of the China Trilogy, number two, China Rising, Capitalist Road, Socialist Destinations, and number three, China is Communist, damn it, Dawn of the Red Dynasty. For the 50th anniversary of Sino-French relations, China accepted a towering three-meter bronze statue of de Gaulle by artist Jean Cardot a replica of the one on Paris's Champs Elysees. This one is prominently this one is prominently displayed on the first floor of the National Museum in Beijing. I have not seen any other foreigner so visibly lauded in China's flagship museum. Thus, it's quite an honor. Its photo is up top. Then again, our neighbor's lack of support for Argentina may have had a more mundane explanation. Possibly everybody is a little sick and tired of Lionel Messi. At halftime, he was in every other ad promoting the Chinese dairy company Meng Niu, along with potato chips, Pepsi, a, ch a Chinese herbal tea called uh, Jia Li Bao, and God knows what else. Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo was also selling cars, sportswear, and who knows what else. I think it's time for both of them to retire. De Gaulle had the good sense to quit Indochina, as went Dien Bien Phu, or Phu. The writing is on the wall for these two gazillionaire footballers who were clearly outclassed in this year's World Cup. This is Jeff J. Brown signing out from China Rising Radio Sinoland in Shenzhen. Please share this channel. Please share this um, website uh, with your friends, family. Uh, uh, wherever you go to, uh, for, for, for faith and prayer, school, uh, work, etc., to help dispel all of the disinformation about China and also learn a little bit about uh, uh, Chinese uh, life and the Chinese people and its governance. Have a good day. Bye-bye.